Hey everybody, we are here with horse racing enthusiast John Norton and we are starting actually a new series which is going to be Horse Racing 101 and it is a series that is not only for people who are beginners and new to horse racing but also to people who actually do follow the sport but certainly have things that they want to know a little bit more. So with that being said, John, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. And today we actually are going to talk about horse racing syndicates. Yes. So I know that you do participate in that, John. So um, before we get started, I just wanted to share with our audience what the definition of that would be. Um, so I have the definition as in the horse world, a syndicate is generally a group of people who pool their funds to invest in a horse together and share the horse's annual cost. Everyone who, quote, buys in is a shareholder and owns a portion of the horse for a set period of time or until the horse is re-syndicated or sold. So with that being said, John, would you please share um, a little bit about your experience with a horse racing syndicate? Absolutely. Thank you. And, and hello, everyone. Um, so by that definition, um, you know, I think uh, syndicates would, would sort of cover a wide sloth of, of, of different investment vehicles that go into the horse racing industry. Uh, I, I happen to be involved with my race store, my race horse, horse.com. And um, I'm very, I have a very favorable opinion of them. And I feel like, um, you know, they have a very important role in the industry. And I think it's going to be an expanding role as, as uh, the industry grows and we start to get a little bit more momentum and more people involved in, in the ownership process. I find that these syndicates, and I would call this a micro share syndicate, meaning micro meaning um, you don't take 100% of the horse and divide it into shares and sell all those shares. What they really do is they, they, they have up to like 49% allocated for the investors in these micro uh, share um, um, uh, allotment, if you will. And uh, each share is less than one and a half of 1%. In most cases, it's even less than, you know, um, you know, I guess a third of that, really. But um, I, think, I think that it has a, va a very valuable place in the industry. I think it exposes people to other sides of the industry that they wouldn't ordinarily see. And, and that's definitely been my experience. Um, there are other, um, there are other uh, syndicates that are out there. Some of are more lucrative, uh, I would say, but it comes with uh, a, a higher cost and, um, and, and risk, right? Um, what MyRacehorse.com offers is a very low entry fee and no added costs down the road, right? So you're not paying out of pocket other than that initial sort of investment of whatever it is, you know, 50 to to $100, depending on the type of horse that you buy. But what it does is, and what I have found that it does, is it, it offers, um, I don't think that anyone's going to get rich buying through MyRacehorse.com. You may make some money at the end of the day. Um, I think where, where it, it benefits you is in, in your knowledge and your experience and increasing your relationships within, within, um, within the, um, the industry itself through their functions that they hold. So it really offers you that experience and then the increase of knowledge. And then it does provide you a, a bit of information that you wouldn't ordinarily have. And I would, I would give an example of that. Um, I had an investment in uh, a horse that's no longer running. It's often um, doing trail work, but um, called Power Up Painter. And Power Up, um, you know, was a, you know, uh, was a good horse. He, I mean, he, 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 he was a beautiful horse. Um, didn't necessarily perform all that great on the track. Um, but um, when he was gelded and Linda Rice was his trainer, we got information that he was gelded. And, and, and if you made a wager at that point in time, uh, that paid off very handsomely. So um, I think that's one way that, you know, sort of you benefit from it. Um, I really think, too, it's kind of opened my eyes that the cost associated with just your direct ownership in a horse. It's, it, these, a lot of these horses get uh, injured and have to go through months of training and retraining and therapy. And um, those, that all has a price tag associated with it. And um, so what, what this does, what, what, what MyRacehorse.com has done is, is it's given me that information. It helped me see that. It also helped me to see that you have your Colts in, in your, um, in your um, fillies. And um, 
you know, if you, you buy in as a, as a, as a two year old or, or so. And, uh, these, these horses, um, have two different tracks in their career and their career on the, on, on the track itself. Um, the Colts, if, if they're really not getting it and, you know, they'll go through a couple of mechanisms to try to get them to sort of focus and, and get to running. And, and then, uh, you get, being gelded would be the last, last one in that phase. And, um, and then what they do is, and, and again, I think my resource is great at this, is they uh, find a, a second career or a third career for the, for the horse. Uh, what I found is that with the Phillies, depending on their pedigree, they have value uh, outside of the track, right? Um, so you'll see that uh, even if they don't even make it to the track, the Phillies with good pedigree with some of the top sires and, um, and, and, and broodmares, um, you'll see that, um, you know, they, they – they still will have a uh, residual cost associated when, when they're unwound. So I don't know if that answered the question 100%, but um, I'm, I'm a real a fan of – it's a debatable point in the industry, but I'm a real fan of it. It's really exposed to me, the industry. Um, and um, I, um, I have other comments on that, but I'll, I'll probably go on to the next question. Okay, so um, who can participate and how would one um... – start to move towards that okay so that's a, that's a good question uh anyone i think you have to be you know over 18 uh, would be my guess uh from a you know be able to sign a contract right um because you are in essence signing an agreement or a contract um, when when you sign into it it's not that you have a, any liability associated with it i mean your liability would be the purchase price of, of your uh, your your micro share if you will um but um so anyone can really do it. I guess what I would say is it's, it, I'd like to, because of my background in finance, right, and in particular with these kind of structures, but not, not with wrapped around horses, but wrapped around sort of alternative investments. Um, I've read these documents, these offering memorandum, and I really would encourage people to read the documents, particularly those related to MyRacehorse.com. Because you, if you go in into this sort of encounter, and so if you're going into this with sort of you're going to make it rich, you're going to strike it rich, you know, that's really not, not what it's all about. And my read of the documents associated with this, this syndicate anyhow is, um, you know, it, it lists out all the rights and responsibilities. And, uh, and I find them very straightforward. And I've actually, you know, owned, a, uh, got involved in, uh, you know, I would say a handful to maybe two handfuls of horses. And I, I think they apply the rules and, you know, this this is all reviewed by the SEC as well because, the, you know, it's an offering memorandum. It's a legal document. When you sign on it, um, you're saying that you read it and you understand it and then you make your investment. So it, you, you have to have the money and, and you have to be able to sign a document. So okay. 18. Absolutely. And if anyone has any questions, they should um, obviously speak to their attorney. Yes. Okay. So um, I know that you have had a lot of fun opportunities as a result of being part of this. And um, I think that we would be remiss to not go over the enjoyment that you've had from your participation. So let's touch on that. And then we will look forward to um, additional um, Horse Racing 101 videos. Oh, sure. So um, I think one of the things that you have to remember associated with this, that any money that, that is made on this, just theoretically you still you're not theoretically but you actually still have you know tax taxes due on that income uh so everyone who signs up will be getting a 1099 is assuming that you, your horse makes money and then you'll have to see your tax advisor again because it's not very well it's not a lot but it, it could be enough to shake you up a little bit as far as like uh, you know that it's it's not there and the irs just says well the form was issued and you haven't filed it but i mean it's small money um from an experience standpoint, uh, I, I, cat, I categorize them across a number of different things, and I'll leave the best for last, actually. But um, we, you know, we, we've actually gone out. We saw Power Arpano in one of his runs at Belmont. So it got us up when, when we were up in Pennsylvania, got us up to go see Belmont and be at Belmont and experience it. Um, I went separately to um, see him run at Aqueduct. And I hadn't been to Aqueduct before. It was, uh, you know, middle of the week kind of thing. But... Um, you had access to the owner's box, you know, you get treated almost like a, you know, a real, like you are a real owner, but you get treated like you're, you know, you have a lot more into it than what your, your cost is associated with. I find the next level of sort of interaction is very, um, 
I thought it was very fun, very informative. I, it was like breakfasts or mornings at the workouts at Saratoga where you met fellow investors and horse players. You talk to people who work in the industry for my racehorse, uh, whether they work in, you know, the press or whether they're, you know, uh, breeders or agents or whatever. And just being able to sort of connect with these people and, and just I'm like a sponge as it relates to this industry. And I think other people are, are like it, it would be the same way is that you just try to get as much information as you can. Um, I would say. Uh, the next is that they offer like sort of these uh, parties or get togethers, not uh, not party in the sort of a huge oh, there's a party thing. It's a get together to watch a horse run. And it could be at any track. I've seen them offered out at Del Mar, San Anita. I've seen them offered uh, down at Gulfstream, certainly. And we'll get into one of those, but also in, in, in at Saratoga as well. Um, so, you know, another couple of things that I've done that would have been I never would have had the opportunity was um, in the spring early spring, maybe late winter, uh, went up to Ocala to the OBS, um, you know, the, the site of the auction and the, and, and, and the, the timing trials of, um, of one-year-olds. And uh, my race was offered a, um, a, a, a day there where you were able to see the horses train, particularly those that are in, you know, up and coming within, within or, or uh, being offered at the time. And uh, that was really a lot of fun. And it was, you got to meet a couple of trainers. You saw the people that work at my race. So it's very educated, very informed people. Um, and, and you got to have a question and answer with the ownership group, which I thought was just really, it was really a, a eye opening. And uh, you can just learn so much from all of that. And then I would say my, my, my favorite moment of all time, sorry about the shake there, uh, is um, you know, uh, it was back when. Um, you know, in the middle of COVID, and and actually, when we, if you remember, middle of COVID, right? Horse racing. Anyone who was in a favorite, a fan of sports, horse racing industry saved us all, right? Because every other sport was closed down. Every other sport, there was no ac activity. There was nothing going on, but Gulfstream stayed open. And Gulfstream was like, what, what, what a oasis of 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 um, um, opportunity and uh, teaching people about racing, and and maybe to some degree. Um, gambling or, or that kind of thing if they came from another gambling you know sport and, and they wanted to come here but anyway, I got a call from my racehorse that said hey you know um, you know one of our horses is running you're one of the owners one of the few owners that live down in Florida would you like to join us and I by I was already going so I said yeah I'd love to so uh, they availed uh, to be in one of the boxes at Gulfstream uh, the horse that was running I think I've mentioned before is um, um, got stormy um, we spent some time up with the fellow owners up in the box. We in, enjoyed uh, with food and beverages. And then, um, my, then we went down to, uh, I like to be on track level to see the horses run right at the, the wire. We watched God stormy wind come across and I had a jacket with me and jumped right into the winner's circle saw Paige, I think, and others that were down there. And then, um, uh, Mark Cassie came up to me while I was in the winner's circle, me and a friend of mine. And he said, would one of you want to walk the horse into the winner's circle? Yeah, because she won, obviously. And uh, what an experience. That, that was just a fascinating uh, experience. Uh, I'd probably never have it again. Um, I walked out with Mark Cassie and I said, okay, you have to tell me, you know, what I should be doing when, when I do this. And I said, more importantly, what I should not be doing. And uh, he said, don't worry about it. The, you know, the handler's here. He's going to stay. The assistant trainer's going to stay. Uh, holding on to the horse, but you're going to be holding one of the leads and you'll walk in and they'll take pictures, et cetera. So it was very good. Now, my only thing is like, this is probably not politically correct, but uh, you know, we had the mask on. That's the only regret that I have is that the ma everyone had to wear masks at that time. So, you know, that was the rule and that's the way it was. So um, anyhow, that was a great experience. Um, a few weeks later, um, you ha I had an opportunity to buy uh, some uh, pictures of, of walking in and that kind of thing. We met Tyler Gaffleon, the jockey. So very good experience. Never would have happened otherwise. Awesome. That's so great. All right. Well, thank you so much. Anything else you want to add to this? So I don't want to, um, we're going to give the website um, on this video. We'll offer the website. Um, and um, I, anything else you want to add? I no, I would just say great opportunity to learn about the industry. Anyone who's new to the industry and wants to get involved it's a really um, low investment way to, to to learn and you can't pay for that knowledge um 
And I would say that uh, read the documents and um, enjoy and then, you know, and participate. You can get as much out of it as you are willing to participate in. That's great. Thank you so much, John. Thank as you. Always. And thank you, everybody. And we'll look forward to more videos on Horse Racing 101. Sounds great. Thank you, everyone. Bye.